In this video, I'm going to be specifically looking at the causes for chronic fatigue syndrome or ME at this point of time. Broadly, there are five causes that have been described in literature and certainly in the CDC website, these are listed commonly. The first and most commonly is infections. Many viruses have been implicated, the most common of them being the Epstein-Barr virus and then the herpes virus is another, another common kind. There are a few other viruses that have been known to cause this kind of chronic fatigue like picture. And now with the COVID pandemic upon us, we've got to include the coronavirus as possibly contributing. Now, whether the type of CFS caused by COVID is a different variety, whether long COVID in some ways is much more severe than CFS. This is still early stage. We are trying to understand it. But infections, by and large, are the most common reason for CFS. Now, these infections need not just be the flu or the kind that affects the respiratory symptoms system, but you can also have viruses that can affect the gastrointestinal system. So what people might have is a very nasty case of diarrhea or some kind of a stomach bug after which the symptoms of CFS can start. So we need to remember that both of them can be responsible for the arrival and entry of viruses and other organisms into our system and causing and leaving behind a mark of CFS or ME. The second one is related to the first one, but it is specifically the immune system itself. So the immune system itself can be affected. Obviously, it's going to respond to any infection and change, but sometimes immune cells themselves can be responsible for triggering and starting such a problem. Now, the three most common types of immune cells that have been implicated in CFSME are first, what's called the cytokines. The second is a kind of cells called the natural killer cells. And the third is a form of T cells. Now, all of these are representatives of the immune system. They all have certain functions to do as part of protecting us. Some of them are naturally present, the innate immunity. Some of them are parts of the immune system that get triggered when we have either a stress or an injury or a surgery or an infection. So the adaptive part. And these cells can change and sometimes result in the presentation of the variety of symptoms we see in chronic fatigue. The third kind is genetics. We talk often about some people with some genes having been predisposed to it. There are studies which talk about familial either twins or that kind of hereditary transfer. I think the field is still too broad and we haven't been able to consistently narrow down. In my opinion, I think rather than genetics, I think the concept of epigenetics, meaning while genetics loads the gun, it is epigenetic factors that actually pull the trigger. What do I mean by that? What I mean is when you have certain factors that change the expression of the gene, meaning what makes a gene be produced or expressed or become proteins can depend on certain environmental factors, lifestyle factors and immediate family factors there. All of these can influence which genes are processed or represented more, which genes are covered more. And I think therefore epigenetics is probably a bigger role to play than genes themselves. But this is still research that is happening there. The fourth part is stress in itself. Now stress is really a major and a very big factor. It can be physical stressor, so you can have a road traffic accident, you can have a major surgery, you can have some kind of a severe infection that results in an ICU stay with lots of interventions and antibiotic use. It can be that kind of physical stress or it can be significant emotional stress. So it can be a bereavement, can be a shock, can be some major emotional trauma at certain times in your childhood or in your adulthood. All of these can change the immune system 
and by altering the immune system and the way it interacts with the nervous system, it can then present itself as chronic fatigue syndrome. Certainly in my practice, clinically, I have seen lots of patients where they wouldn't have any evidence of an infection, they wouldn't have any evidence of any obvious immune system problem according to blood tests, and they wouldn't have had any obvious genetics as well. So I think we need to think about how stress or emotional factors can be playing a part in the presentation of the symptoms. The last, but not the least, is energy factors, energy production. Now we all know that in our cells, we have certain factories that are responsible for creating and converting the energy molecules that are called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. These factories are called mitochondria. And we understand that sometimes deficiency in energy production, either because the mitochondria are not producing enough energy, or there's something in the structure and the function of the mitochondria that does not allow it to work as normal. Any of these changes with the energy uh, producing factories can result in lowered energy output from all cells of the body. And that can be also a manifestation of chronic fatigue as a predominant picture. So just to recap, the five causes for CFS ME as we know it are infections, immune system problems, genetics and epigenetics, energy production factors within the cell, and finally stress. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found the content useful and of value to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button for more videos to be notified.